Dharma 
occupational activities. The man performs according to his own position. According to his own position. Yeah. <laughs> 
because other occupational duties, whatever is or they may belong to, cannot give liberation to the soul. Even the activities of the salvationists are considered to be useless because of their failure to pick up the pick up the fountainhead of all liberties. The gross materialist can practically see that this material gain is limited only to time and space, either in this world or in the other. Even if he goes up to the Swarga Loka, he will find no permanent abode for his Soul. The hankering soul must be satisfied by the perfect scientific process of perfect devotional service. Om Ajnana Purana Nasya Bhutananjana Shalakaya Chakshuna Viditam Vena Tasman Shri Guru Vena Tanya mano vishta mustapita vena bhutali Sivam rupa kutamayam dharati
The animals also have that same kind of conception. The lower animals, their whole activities, all their business is centered around the body. They just want to enjoy the body. And they think there's nothing beyond the senses. Prabhupada quote, Charvaka, Charvaka Muni, the famous atheist, right? Charvaka Muni said, beg, borrow, or steal, but eat be. <laughs> That's, isn't that the goal of life? You should eat be, right? Give and you have to beg it, or borrow it, or steal it. Somehow, eat be. Then your life is successful. For, for some people, they think like that. They're thinking that is the goal of life. And then, you've got other people who are a little bit different. Uh, they're more on a mental platform. They enjoy the minds more. They enjoy the mind more. They will write poetry. They will speak philosophy. Their own philosophy. Not, not Vedic culture, but they will have their own philosophy, own opinions about everything. Sometimes people will become very absorbed in music, you know, playing the piano and playing the violin or singing the Carnatic songs, right? People have all it's harmless, but it's also not doing any good. It's not doing any harm, but it's not doing any good either. It's not really recognizing the duty of life, the purpose of life. You just feel good. Oh, I'm singing this beautiful song. spend their whole lives in this way. They pass their whole life and they take work sometimes again and again and again to do the same things. There's, there's been cases, little children, they would just get up on the piano and they never played the piano before, but there's a piano and they begin to play it because from their previous life. They have already passed many, many years playing the piano. And the next slide, they took birth again, and there was a piano, and they could immediately play it. They have the memory from the past life. And then you get people also who are artists, who paint pictures. Some people are very talented in art, because in their previous life, they have already a lot of skill, painting pictures, and they come again. There was a the famous man in India, there was a good one, Ravi Shankar. He was a sitar player. He played the sitar, right? And it said he had taken birth nine times playing the sitar. Every birth he came. So, then by the ninth time, he's very good. He played very well. But you spend so many lifetimes to do these things. That is not the goal of life. You don't solve the problem of life. You're just simply doing these things, these different activities for the pleasure of the body, The real self, people have no knowledge, I don't know about the soul. So when we are introducing Krishna consciousness to people, we always begin by telling them, first of all, do you know who you are? Have you understood your identity? Right? It's 
they are environment by the condition which our body is experiencing. But if we can come to spiritual consciousness, then we can appreciate more about what is my identity. Knowing ourselves as a soul. Right? So the Bhagavad Gita begins like that. We want to give spiritual knowledge to people. First of all, we have to get them to understand who they are, who we are, who are they. We have to understand that, that I am not the body, I am living in the body, but I am not the body. I am a soul, and my soul is only a tiny part of the Supreme Soul. In addition to the tiny soul, there's a supreme soul. We give different examples to explain this. We say, just like a big fire, there may be a blazing fire, and a spark comes out from the fire. So the living entities are like the spark which comes out of the fire. If the spark falls on dry grass, then it can ignite the dry grass, it can burn and make another fire. But if the spark falls into water, then the spark will be put out, it will be extinguished. So we are like little sparks compared to the fire. The fire is the supreme spirit. And we are the tiny living entities. This, the, the fire is infinite and we are infinitesimal. We are very small. The fire is very great. We are very small. So this, this is, in this example, is given to understand the relationship between the Supreme Lord and the living we are the living entities and we are very small. Another example is given like the drop of water and the ocean. The drop of water has all the qualities of the ocean but very different in quantity. The same in quality but different we have a relationship with the Lord like that. We have the qualities of the Lord, but not in the same quantity. Rupa Goswami analyzes the qualities of the Lord, and he describes them, and he says, even in the most perfect condition, the living entity, we can only have 78% of the qualities of the Lord. Not, not all the qualities, but nearly all. They say 50 out of 64. Rupa Goswami was 64 different qualities. 50 of them are there if you get up to a position like Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is also a little entity. And he, he in this perfect condition, he may have 50 out of 64 qualities. And above Brahma, then you have Lord Shiva. He has 55 out of 64 qualities. And above Lord Shiva, then you have Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu has 60 out of 64 qualities. So, you can understand something. The supreme position of Lord Krishna. He is the Supreme above everyone, and we are tiny compared to Him. We have a relationship with Him, and we want to understand that relationship. The relationship is basically He is the Master, and we are the Servant. He is the Supreme, we are His subordinates, we are under Him. Now, of course, when we hear that, because of our conditioned nature, we will 
complain. I want to become the supreme. Why should he always be the supreme? Why should we always be subordinate? Why should we be under his? That is the conditioned nature. We want to become the supreme. And some people even try to become God. Just like there were big demons. They try to become God. They try to control the world. There are many demons. They're trying to control the world. They're trying to get power. And they're trying to exploit everything in the world for their own pleasure. But they're never successful for very long. They all have to be with death. We say, as sure as death. And death is certain. Right? But when you take birth, you have to die. Every one of us has to leave the body one day. So the demons are trying to control, but whatever control they have is very limited. They cannot control how long they will live. When, they, when the time comes, they have to leave the body. They have to die. Nobody wants to die. We don't want to die, but we cannot avoid it. We don't want to die because that is our actual nature as a spiritual being. If when we understand our spiritual identity, then we don't die. For one who is in divine consciousness, there's no death. Because death is simply giving up one body to take another body. It's just a change of dress. Just like you change the dress. Yesterday you were dressed differently, today you come in a different dress. But you're the same. The same way death. You give up one body, you take another body. It's just a change of dress. So one of divine consciousness is not bewildered by these things. Rather, he understands his nature as a spiritual being. He understands his relationship with the Supreme is based on love. It's not based on exploitation and you know, putting terror into people. And you better work for me or else. We have to understand God is not like that. He's a loving master. In the material world, the idea of being the servant is not pleasant. But in the spiritual world, to be the servant, that is the highest thing. That is the greatest pleasure, to be the servant. There is more pleasure in being the servant than in being the master. And that is why Krishna came. And he came 500 years ago as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He came to experience the pleasure of being the servant. Lord Krishna came 5,000 years ago and he saw how the gopis were enjoying more than him. Now Krishna is thinking, I want to enjoy. I, I'm supposed to be the supreme enjoyer. But they're enjoying more than me. So Krishna thought, I want to enjoy like them. So therefore, he came as a servant to experience the joy of being a devotee, to take the mood of the gopis. Because of all the devotees, the gopis are the best. And they're experiencing the greatest pleasure in serving so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the gopis come to make it. It seemed like pain 
because they were separate from Krishna. But that separation from Krishna was the greatest pleasure. That was the highest pleasure. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to experience that mode of separation from Krishna. To cultivate that mode of the gopis. Gopi Baba. Right? The mode of the gopis. Vitra Baba Seva. Not just only service, but service in the mode of separation. Just like now we are separate from Gorgi Thai. Last night Gorgi Thai was there, but today they've gone. Oh, we will think, where did they go? Why won't they come again? Right? We should be thinking, why won't they come? Where is Krishna? Where is Lord Gorgi? Why won't he come? Why right? we're feeling separation? from the deities. So that is the greatest ecstasy, the greatest pleasure in serving Krishna. Because one is more absorbed, one has more feeling in separation. Just like you may have a child and the child goes, grows up and he goes to college when you go away to college, you're thinking, oh, when will my child come home again? Oh, they've gone to college. Oh, they're in school. When will they come home? When they're at home, you're always complaining, telling them, don't sleep so much, don't be lazy, don't be dirty, clean this, do that. But when they go away, more affection for them in the absence. So this, this is the most in service to Krishna, to feel the separation from Krishna. That is the ecstasy, the Baba of the gopis. So that that is divine consciousness. To have that kind of other devotees they, they see Krishna everywhere. You can see Krishna everywhere. Krishna said, I am the taste in water. I am the light of the sun and the moon. I am the sun in ether. I am ability. Everything is Krishna. You can see Krishna everywhere. But that is an impersonal nature. We want to feel the person. The person, not just the impersonal energy, right? There's different features of God. There's an the impersonal feature, the Brahman. There's the all-pervading feature, Paramatma. See, God in everyone's heart, in the heart of everyone, Paramatma. But there is also Bhagavan. Swaya Bhagavan, Krishna, the person, the cowherd boy, the darling of Mother Yashoda. We want to see that person. We want to be with him and enjoy with him, take part in his loving feelings and his exchanges with the devotees. That is the ultimate pleasure. So in order to enter into this pastime to Krishna, we have to hear, we have to hear about Krishna regularly. We have to hear more and more. And the more we hear, the more we will become attached to Krishna. And then to develop our attachment. Now we have attachment to the material world. We're attached to our car, we're attached to our home, we're attached to our family. Attachment is not wrong, but we have to purify it. We have to understand these things in relation to Krishna. 
So it's not wrong, but we have to purify that attention. See them in relation to Krishna. See the family in relation to Krishna. That they're all parts of Krishna. We come together in the family. Parts and parcels of Krishna. In this way we have to develop our divine consciousness so that we can go on to become absorbed in thought of Krishna and we can go on to be with Krishna. Okay, any question? Deva Deva Prabhu, Hare Krishna, welcome. Any comment Prabhu? I'm staying here. I'm staying here. Best quality and 
even though it's difficult for me and I'm having, you know, I'm, my mind is resisting and I'm, I'm not very good at getting up in the morning and I often eat too much and I'm lazy, but still I want to do it. I'm determined to do it. So when you have that determination, then that's very important. It's a big help to progress. I have to do this for Krishna. We have wasted so many lifetimes in the material world without Krishna consciousness. Now, I must give this one life for Krishna. So many other lives I have wasted. Now I have to give this one life for Krishna. So that determination is important. And then, uh, executing the regulated principles like hearing and chanting. We have to do it every day. We have to, we have to sing the songs, all the same songs every day. Oh, every day, Samsara <laughs> Everybody sing the same song. We have to meditate. It's a meditation. It's not just about singing a song, but it's a meditation we're doing. We're meditating all the different songs we sing are meditation for our mind to remember Lord Krishna and our spiritual teachers and to remember our relationship with these things. So, yeah, we meditate when we sing these songs. If you sit and meditate, you sit quiet, it's difficult. But when we sing the songs, it's easier to meditate. So, regular principles like hearing and chanting, very important. And then, association, get the right association with the devotees, try to avoid the non devotees try to associate, be eager to associate with the devotees. And association with the devotees means hearing, chanting, putting on festivals, arranging programs, these things. Right? So, Utsahan Nishjayantaraya Tatsat Karma Pravartana Sangat Sangat Satomrite following in the footsteps of the great Acharyas, following the example. No? How did they do it? This is Prabhupada's example. Prabhupada, you know, he was in family life, but he was chanting, he was going to the temple, he would take his children to the temple, trying to make his children also the devotees. He was helping the devotees also when they do a new temple, we would help them to raise funds, do all these things. And he would write articles about Krishna consciousness. So we have to follow these examples. And then you progress.